Infernal Shrines, game number one. We are in the fourth qualifier of the Banshee Cup, everybody. And we got the Bobby Cottage fan club in blue going up against the Svenskas on the right. Fourth qualifier. And again, it's been a blast so far. Qualifier number three ending in the grand final with a butcher game. <laughs> that was absolutely epic. And now we have the Svenskas back for the fourth qualifiers. They're trying to get some points for the leaderboard. So in case you're unfamiliar with the system, we are essentially using a similar tournament system that we did with the latest Meta Madness tournament here at the Banshee Cup. We have six qualifiers in total. The teams, as they progress through the bracket, pick up points and they can accumulate as many points as they want with as many qualification participations as they like. And then at the end of the qualifiers, those points, they get uh, summed up and the teams that are at the top of the leaderboard move on to the playoffs where the teams are playing then for the $2,500 of prize money, all sponsored by uh, the Heroes of the Storm Sugar Daddy, by Kevin, aka Psykiv. And that's what we're here for. So we are in uh, the fourth qualifier. So it's basically only three left. We're, we're at the halftime. And the Bobby Cottage fan club has done surprisingly well. The Frenchies looking good. And now they're going up against the Swedes over here. Which also, if you paid any attention, means that you shouldn't be surprised that Zarya is getting banned. Ixia has been showcasing her over and over again. They love to play her together with Garrosh, but they also play Ixia on Zarya in other contexts. Ixia has been busting out Probius already twice. And, well, let's see what the Swedes are doing. Every time that Svamkarota is in, I haven't seen his murky in ages, honestly, but I am still so complete. <laughs> okay, they're banning Probius too. <laughs> Not something that I thought we would see, that Probius actually gets banned. Played, yes. Banned? I didn't think so. They're targeting Ixir here. But yeah, I haven't seen Svamkorta smirk in a while, but I would absolutely love if eventually he would bust it out. I highly doubt that it would ever happen on the first map, but hey, who knows. If at some point they're desperate, they might go for it. I'm pretty sure Svamkorta would go for it. Uh, then again, Gia drafting, maybe not quite. I'm just happy that we have the red team in the first place because it's cool to just see all the sweets together here. To have Maka in uh, and yeah, it could be some awesome games. Now there's one draft rule that we have for this tournament and if you watched any of the qualifier matches you should be familiar with it. We do not use pre bans none, neither for the playoffs nor the qualifiers, finals, whatever. But you can only play a hero once within a series. Just makes it a bit more interesting. Nobody wants to see Blaze and Hanzo every single game, so uh, that's the only adjustment that we have. Mephisto getting picked by Nagrom is also interesting to me, because that is a pick on Inferno Shrines that I could have seen 100% from Marke. Marke has been doing this a bit, and now that I say it, I am again reminded that Marke is actually playing support for the team which I'm consistently blanking on. I've been casting this guy for years and years and years, and he was always a damage dealer for them. But, yep, yeah, now he's playing support, which is just so weird for me to see. And another Ixia ban. Damn, they hate his guts. Wow, every single ban from the Svenskas is targeting Ixia. That's crazy. So, yeah, they're definitely out there right now with their ban patterns, but hey. Respect bans. Does it mean that they don't respect anyone else on the team? Am I reading this correctly? So they only respect him? Alright, fair enough. Well, we got Malthael. Another good pick for the map. Something that we've seen from the red team too. I think this is also one of the few times when the French team is finally playing on the left side. So, a little bleu. But the double picks over on the right. I would love to dazzle you with my with my um, my Swedish as well, by the way. But the only thing that I know really in Swedish is Jevla Opa, Sluta Pilla Pruten. And that's pretty much it. So my French, there's a little bit more there. But all my Swedish is basically from Fnatic, so hey, like don't don't like I'm, I apologize in advance, but yeah, that's pretty much the only thing that I got taught. We got stitches, so yeah. Could even go into Emerald Wind if you really wanted to. I don't think that we're going to get to see that, but isolation plays with Stitches Hook Gorge into Emerald Wind have in the past been a thing. We get Blaze as a follow-up stun. Junkrat can throw down a trap. So, there's a couple of things. Deathwing are now getting locked in, and as a last pick, we're getting Ixia on Lucio. That leaves us with a Swamp Grotta, the final pick for the Svenskars over here. 
a bit more damage would definitely go a long way for them. Something that they can uh, use to burst anything that Stitcher's Gorge uh, gobbles up later on away. So, let's see. But yeah, pretty happy with the draft for game number one, I gotta say. Stitcher's games are always funny. Like, good hooks. And we get Thrall as a follow-up, so even more roots and damage. I like it. Let's go, everybody. Game number one of the best of three series here at qualifier number four of the Banshee Cup. Game number one, the blue team on the left side. Virtual on Leoric with Ixia on Lucio. Jean LaSalle on Deathwing and they muted him. Now given that Jean LaSalle is apparently some kind of meme politician in France, is that a restriction of speech? Is this right now, oh, wow, I mean, are they really trying to muzzle him? Are they so fed up with his message that they are now trying to silence him? That is unbelievable. France, what's going on over there? Macron, we need a word. Malgany on Diablo, we got Nagrom on Mephisto, and over on the right side of the map, the Svenskas with Gia on Junkrat, we get Mak on Brightwing, Skook on Stitches, Swam Grotta with Blaze, and Max Passion is playing a Thrall. So, on level 1, we get Patchwork Creation, we get a Skull Missile build for Mephisto on the blue team side. As... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mount is that? <laughs> is he trying? This is so not working. <laughs> little beaver, or whatever it is, with Diablo over there. That's just crazy. But okay, anyways. Right now, we have at the top side already our 1v1 quick jet propulsion and a little bit more damage to virtual. Yeah, Leo is not gonna have a fun time here. He might actually die. He is gonna die. That's the end of Leoric, so he gets doubled, and now they have taken a tower down to 50% HP. But that is highly annoying for Leoric, and the party continues at the bottom as Ixia is nearly getting destroyed here. Gia makes it out of the fight alive, thanks to Brightwing, but that got spicy quickly. And Leo is already experiencing the wrath of the Svenskas firsthand, as they are trying to push not only through the top side wall, but also trying to kill... Leoric once again and he's not looking good here the guy is only skin and bones right now we're getting the bad jokes out of the way at the beginning of the game so you don't have to suffer through them later on that's all that we're doing here but yeah virtual barely makes it I can understand the anger that the red team players have because again he's riding a pleb horse here and that needs to be punished Brightwing also jumping around to help out a bit Middle of the map stitches for just a second, looked like he would be isolated, but which is not quite happening. And down to the bottom of the map in the meantime, we're still having Gia looking for the next camp here. So it's actually an interesting setup. Oh, Thrall and Leo both dying at the top. Okay, so an exchange of kills. And in the middle of the map, Malganir got attacked as Brightwing was starting to help out here. I gotta admit that the opening from the red team is actually pretty cool. I like how aggressive they are here. Normally when we look at qualifier number three and number two, it was the Bobby Cottage fan club that started to make most of the big plays. I mean, they were always the one trying to drive the bus, trying to drive the agenda in these games. But yeah, we'll see what they what they can actually uh, do right now. Because it seems like the red team is absolutely not willing to give up control of the game and play their style. They are the ones currently rotating between the lanes, initiating those fights, getting a few kills, taking the top wall out. That's actually pretty big if you consider that the next or the first Punisher is at the top side. So if they take it, if the red team gets it, they should easily be able to take the fort out. Now camps have been taken, two of the Khazra camps went over to the blue team. And they're actually also trying to steal the shamans away, which by the way backfired. Marker didn't die here either, so that's a lot of time that they used where they didn't get anything out of it. As long as they don't get a kill here, yeah, Max Passion gets absolutely blocked, but Brightwing is ready for the rescue. Leo has already moved over to the shrine and works on the first objective. But there is a gap in experience and tradition. Normally that wouldn't really be that, be that big of a deal, but it's just at level 7 as it kicks in. And that extra talent is always nice to have. Malganir goes down, so he is destroyed. Yeah, things start to look a bit troublesome for uh, the blue team. So the Frenchie is here. They are all right. Oh, okay. Who comes in? Nagro might be in trouble. Ixia. Lucio is, by the way, the perfect character for the French. He helps them to run away faster. <laughs> I mean, that's a win and a half. <laughs> there should be some special synergy there. So, yeah. Lucio 
Lucio is French. Never really occurred to me until now, but now that we're looking at it, it's so obvious. I cannot believe that I didn't notice it until now. So Max Passion gets saved for a moment. They're still trying to turn it around here. 21 stacks to 6. And the red team isn't really showing up in full force here. They're apparently willing to let the first Punisher go. We have at the bottom of the map still another wall about to be taken out since Van Grotta and Gia are pushing some camps into the towers and then take them apart. So there we go. Lucio getting killed all the way up at the top. And yeah, that's another kill. Four in total now for the red team. And guys, they are heavily added experience. They're getting a lot of value here. Now they will lose the Punisher, but they're also taking Mephisto out. So that's another big one. Mephisto is taken apart. And now the chance to maybe even get Diablo destroyed. If they really wanted him, they should have tried to body block over here. But okay, they get him anyways. Fair enough, and that Punisher is gonna do nothing. Pretty much nothing. I don't think that he has a chance to do anything meaningful here. So, right now, we have level 10 kicking in in just a few seconds for the red team. They're looking very strong. Maka coming back quickly for a bit of mana. They have level 10 now. That gives us, of course, Gorge. We have Sundering in. And they will try to, uh, yeah, just grab Ixia down here blindside him, maybe someone else, steal a few camps away. Oh they, oh, they get the Gorge on Mephisto! Diablo pushing over, I like that move, but came straight into the trap, and Nagro makes it out, but that fight forced could become a problem for the blue team. The Frenchies are definitely in trouble, they don't have level 10, so this is not a fight they want to fight. They're trying to retreat here, and they're managing to get away. Years of practice, obviously, make that easy. But good for them. They can wait until they have level 10 and that window that we had for the Swedish team is nearly evaporated. There's not a whole lot that they got out of it. You would have thought that they might try to go for one of the forts or maybe a wall, but they didn't really. So now both teams have heroic abilities. They're still trying to take at least virtual out, even dropping the bunker for that. Good blocks and that is the end of Leoric, which makes it a bit easier for Svam Grotta to control the top. At the bottom of the map, on the other hand, Lucio moving in and here comes Deathwing. Get wrecked. Nicely done. Big hits coming, and that was pretty awesome. That was a really nice double kill from the French team. Perfectly executed, and they get a camp to boot. A quick Gorge. Uh, Stitches is trying to at least get a counter kill, but now he gets body blocked, and they are getting a bit too aggressive here. They're going to lose Stitches as a result, and that is definitely a kill that they could have avoided. But it all started with a double kill, thanks to uh, Deathwing. So, uh, first of all, down at the bottom of the map, Deathwing flying in, getting the perfect angle here. And yep, they just killed everyone afterwards with Mephisto. Swam Grotta at the top is now also dropped, and that is three kills, four kills in a row, essentially, that we get from the Bobby Cottage fan club. So, they are closing this gap very, very quickly. At the beginning, it was definitely the Swedish show, but now the French are starting to take over a bit here. So, they're doing well. They definitely are. They're looking pretty good. Starting to take camps now too. A lot of momentum that they're building up with this. That has a lot of tools, obviously, in the hands of the red team, as they can always operate around the hook. After level 13, it's going to be even more impactful. And towards the top right, we now have also the next camp taken. Set on route. Not timed around the objective, by the way. I don't even think that the fan club took their own camp yet. I don't think they have moved to the top left even once to take their own camp. Which is actually a little bit wild when you think about it. So they're not timing anything here. But now we have the extended hook range that makes things a little bit easier. And they're immediately getting Mulgan here. Okay, so the idea is now to take him out. Deathwing immediately attempting the rescue. Rest of the team is coming in too. And now we have Stitch with the back to a wall. Huge problem for him. And Tomb is already out. Everybody's down here. Five versus five with the bunker being dropped. There's the rip tire. Leo is dead. And they still take Diablo down as well. Both of them eliminated just as the shrine is activating, and it's activating on the exact same lane. They are hoping for another kill, and with a hook against Nagrom, they will get Mephisto. I don't think Ixia can save him here. I don't think it's gonna happen. He gets slammed into the ground by Stitches. Objective is getting started up as well, and that was big. Particular since at the top, the fort now falls to the Shaman camp, so the first structure has been eliminated in this game, and the Swedes are pulling further ahead with this. 
Thrall top damage now in the game, not only on this team. 33,000 for him, really putting the numbers up, as we have Mephisto with 24,000. Top side needed to be defended, and that's where Jean Lasalle comes into play. So he is instantly trying to burn that to a crisp, but they have given up on the Punisher. I mean, duh, obviously. Lost too many heroes, had no chance to make this happen, which means that now there's a big opportunity for the Svenskas to come down here and take a second fort out. So, yeah, th they won't be able to save this. This fort is going to get destroyed. Worst case would be somebody dying while they're semi-protecting it. So yeah, off we go. They're diving way past it right now in an attempt to take it on. In comes Gia with Junkrat and Tomb is already on the ground. Mephisto kinda caught here. Max Passion alive, makes it into the bunker. We'll still have to escape afterwards though. And here comes the lightning breath, but everybody's still alive. Marker's alive. Here comes Leo swinging for the fences. They go for Marker and the fruit fly makes it out at least for now. Leo and Diablo are both dead and with a couple of blink heals. Maka saves the day for them again. Nicely done. So yes, they are able to take out two heroes, maybe even more, and that Punisher is still wreaking havoc down here. Has only lost 50% of its HP. Leo is back in another moment, but they have Nagrom in... Oh, yeah, he needs to be super careful. He's on 50% HP. If he just dives in one more time, he could fall. There's level 16. They want the keep as well, and who's gonna stop them at this point? Without Diablo... Oof. I'm not quite sure if they can get the entire thing. Once the Punisher is done, they might have to retreat. But they damaged it severely. That's a huge advantage, of course, in structures. The passive experience game that they're going to get from here on out is fantastic for them. 16 on the board. They have the advantage. They get another minion wave. They're still hoping to take down the bottom keep. A hook, a stun, and a kill. Mephisto is dead. They went full Diablo on us with some of these picks, but it's not working out for them. Diablo, again caught by Stitches. They try to go for him. Lucio is zipping around in the back, but this is spelling disaster currently. Huge problem. That key will go down, and that is definitely a lot more than uh, the red team initially thought they would be able to get with this. The only one that hasn't died in the entire game is Deathwing. And now it's time to go for some of the camps here. So yep, camps are being taken one at a time as they're moving in. 13 to 8, that's what we're looking at. And over on the right side of the map, there's now... Even the fort saved. They got the wall a little bit and that's about that. So we got now 16 kicking in for the blue team. If they want to make a comeback, then they gotta buckle up. A little blue. Oh, they gotta dig deep to try and make this work. But, yep, the talents are kicking on. That gives us, for now, the Royal Focus. We have also the Dilating Flames and the Lightning Reaction. So this guy, he, by the way, has not completed his quest yet. We're now 12 minutes in, and the quest for Mephisto on level 1 has not been completed. Still three short before he hits it. And Stitch is now with Pulverize, of course, absolutely ruthless. In addition to that, we're also looking at Thunderstorm for them. Thrall has been the top damage dealer for a while now in this game. And he's at 48,000. There's nobody else even coming close to it. Max Passion with a sundering flank and the follow-up. Not enough to grant them a kill. But they're trying again with Stitches. Diablo here wants to have a say in this as well. Barbecue is out. All right. And they go for Mephisto. And they can't get him. They can't take him down. Blaze is still following him. Mephisto's running straight into Junkrat, as it seems. Eats the grenades, and Nagrom dies. Nagrom dies as down here the fight continues to. They want Ixia. They can't get him. Thrall is eliminated, and the two supports are still going up against each other. And I think eventually that's going to be the oh, helping hand attempt. But Lucio soloing Brightwing. They banned out Ixia in the draft time and time again, but he is still a nuisance. Now there's a big wave coming in at the bottom core, but of course we're only 13 minutes in. That's not going to hit them too hard just yet. I don't think that the core is actually going to take damage, but it is enough to send Virtual back. They needed somebody to deal with it, and they decided that Leo was the one to take care of this. That bottom keep missing is a huge problem as all of this continues. So yeah, they're gonna have some trouble here. But then again, 
We're looking at another objective, and Brightwing and Thrall are both still dead. Not for long, but they're still gone. There's a lot of time that is wasted here trying to get a follow-up kill and stagger some deaths, but Deathwing at least has moved on to the shrine and starts on the objective. So he's already there. Up towards the top, there, yep, Jean Lasalle and Nagrom are doing their thing. And this is looking more and more like we're gonna see another Punisher for the French. Inexperience, still trailing by an entire level. Always a bit problematic because that could essentially then lead to a level 20 that kicks in uh, quickly. And a talent advantage that he can use. There's still catapults at the bottom of the map attacking the core, by the way. So, yep, that bot lane is still a concern. Should be defeated by the minions alone. Um, as they currently are, more or less. But still, if this is going to continue throughout the game, then eventually this is going to be a winion style. So, yeah. Core is not really losing any hit points just yet. Next minion wave is coming in and Deathwing has actually retreated to make sure that the shield is not being broken through. But the Arcane Punisher is now in play. Quick stun. Diablo, of course, becoming more of a menace now. And they go again for Dibbles. Get over here. And get a kill. Where's that wall stun when you need it? There's the barbecue. Punishes all the way at the top. And nice. Bunker to save the day, but I think they might still die. Stitches is getting out. Another hook. Gobbles up Mephisto. They have him fully isolated right now. But I don't think they have the tools. Nope, they do. They go for the kill. Diablo is dead. Killed by a Thrall. And Junkrat eliminated Mephisto. That's two heroes gone on the French side. And level 20 is now available. So we have Storm Talons in play for them. And Ixir with another kill. <laughs> Being the pain in the ass that he knows he can be. So the top four has been taken out. The fight down here continues. Lucio is definitely needed to make that uh, work. Diablo is back. He had the stacks earlier. Easy dodge by Ixir. Still trying to take him on. Lucio is so low, but so is the rest of the team. They're trying for the fountain. And there's the tap from Straw, but Brightwing is too late to the party. So that's the support gone. Another hook, another stun. Blaze is gone. Another Lucio kill, but Deathwing got turned into Deadwing too. And another hook hitting Malganir. He's still being kept alive a bit longer by Ixia, but Lucia <laughs> can only do so much. So, yeah. Skog is missing this one, but it is insanely annoying what Ixia is doing to them. Sundering is missing. <laughs> They're so mad. They're so mad at him. He's just diving around them over and over again. He's gonna get another kill, isn't he? Uh, well, now everybody is chipping in, so yes, Thrall goes down. Ixia insane. Absolutely insane. The man is such a monster, it's ridiculous. They banned his Alexstrasza, his Zarya, and they banned Probius. They left Lucio, and he is just dancing circles around him. Yeah, that, on the other hand, could be a kill. Junkrat, where's that? Uh, well... They needed to lock him into place here, so they weren't able to do that. I don't think they... Oh, well, that was actually nice. And a great follow-up with the Riptire. Bye-bye, Mephisto. So, he's again eliminated. Not too bad. That was a good kill. That means that we now have, uh, well, 78 stacks, by the way, for Diablo. So, slowly getting there. We have 29 kills, by the way. 29 kills right now. So, kind of bonkers. For a 17 minute game but yeah things are escalating and they're escalating quickly i mean really quickly <laughs> kills all over the place just massive fiestas push in the middle now by the red team as the svenskas are trying to take the 1-0 lead here they're thing doing his best they're still buying time for mephisto of course but the wall is essentially gone so they're losing a tower they're losing the gate more structures are falling here can also take a bit of a look at the experience game I and mean, again both are now level 20 talent so it's not that big of a deal but you can clearly tell how the passive experience plays a huge role here that's a 7000 xp point difference between the two teams because there's so many structures that got destroyed initially by the boys on the right side of the map so yeah not too bad shrine is activating now we're 18 minutes in bot lane still a concern particularly now that the shaman camp has been taken there too so there's another one and the camp at the top is also going to get timed so th there will be two lanes that are under pressure and leo and deathwing will most likely have to take care of it that's a bit of a problem 
I mean, it really is. Because now we're late in the game, late enough that those catapults are starting to really hurt. And yeah, that bot lane is a problem. Deathwing has a problem too. It's called an acute lack of hit points. So, yeah. He's gonna take to the skies here. As the top lane pushes, lead still for the blue team on the objective. Sundering is out, there's the Entomb, Buried Alive is in, stun against Thrall, but he's still alive, even makes it into the bunker. Leo barely getting out, Malganir is going down once again, he doesn't have his stacks, Leo has fallen, got hit by the grenade here, and this could be uh, the beginning of the end. This is bad, this is really bad. Bot lane is attacking, uh, Deathwing is gonna take care of it. Ixia is now trying to 1v5. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him, honestly, at this point. He dodges everything except for the final grenade. No way. <laughs> that little fucker just doesn't die. <laughs> oh, they don't even go for the objective anymore. They're just like, we're done with this guy. We're just done. One hit, two hits. <laughs> It's still alive! <laughs> this is ridiculous! Look at this! The entire team is going in! The entire team is trying to take him down and they finally have him! <laughs> Round of applause! Nicely done! So Lucio can indeed die. But yeah, at some point the red team said like, fuck it, we're gonna kill him. And if we lose the game, we don't care, but we're going to kill him. This guy goes down. We're done with this shit. <laughs> oh, so damn good. You could look, you literally see how the entire objective of this game switched. From winning to we are killing Lucio. And if it's the last thing that we do, everybody, come in. We're five manning this guy now. So yeah, at this point, obviously, without their support, without their strongest guy, this is starting to become a bit gruesome. They're going for Diablo again. He's getting out with the Hellgate, but the Punisher is already murdering the keep in the middle. There's catapults at the bottom moving through too. They're losing Mephisto here. Everybody is at the end of the day trying to... Uh, I mean, again, it's, <laughs> it's over. Five-man wipe. Lucio is back. And Ixia is there. He's accepting the challenge. He's immediately in the middle of them. He's like, um, I got this. I got this. He's like, boys, don't leave the game yet. I got this. I'm going to defend. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, 1-0 lead for the red team, but still, Ixia in my eyes, the hero of map number one. Either way, super fun. GG well played, and we're going straight into game number two. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, Towers of Doom is the map and there is good news for the red team. And no, it is not that they're in the lead and that they could technically now win the series. It's the fact that Lucio was already played and cannot be played again. <laughs> Ixia killing multiple heroes, chasing them down from one side of the map to the other and then dodging four or five people multiple times was absolutely brilliant. So yeah, big shout out to him. That was some spectacular Lucio play. And it shows again, you can't ban someone out completely. They banned three of his heroes and then he still just absolutely crushed them. Now I want to know what they're doing on in game number two now. Are they just continuing with the exact same bans and target Ixia? Is this going to be another Zarya ban? They should ban Zarya. If they have to ban Probius, I highly doubt it. But Zarya getting banned doesn't come as a shock. I would think that taking some of the supports that Ixia loves to play away would probably be a good idea too so let's see Sylvanas gets the boot and so does Hogger but <laughs> I'm more interested honestly in what kind of bans they're getting from the Swedish team I mean they are in the lead the map choice has been made by them it was first pick first ban by the Bobby Cottage fan club again if you're unfamiliar with it the losing team decides whether they choose the map or whether they instead want to have first pick first ban and they decided that they wanted to have first pick first ban <laughs> so yeah the map was decided uh, by the Swedes and now we have Probius Probius gets banned too I honestly don't understand why they're that showing this much respect for Probius as long as you can still pick stuff like Genji and whatnot Probius you can definitely deal with him so it surprises me a bit at least that they are banning him this consistently 
But yeah, either way. Rega gets taken by Maka. Again, Maka playing support for the team. And now we're getting uh, Hanzo on Towers of Doom. Honor! <laughs> Redemption! <laughs> what a tool. <laughs> okay, so the French virtual obviously loves this Dehaka. I mentioned this in the last qualifier. They have been uh, playing Dehaka whenever they had a chance. I mean, again, in their first round, maybe you prioritize a different a different uh, side laner for some reason, but they're usually the ones ending up with Dehaka eventually. So uh, right now we got a Nuburak as an engaged tool from Algonir. We get Nagrom on Liming, who's been doing a lot of work with her all, uh, too. I'm still waiting for the Tracer pick, honestly. I would say that this is something that Nagrom in particular has been played now several times in these qualifiers and with a lot of success. So, yeah. In addition to that, we get Ana banned out. So they're still targeting Ixia with these bans, but they're switching the supports that they're trying to get rid of. And the final ban of game number two. I mean, it's match point, right? We're in the winner bracket right now. And the winner moves on to the next round. There is, by the way, in case that you are not aware of it, is this is a double elimination bracket. So we have a winner and a loser's bracket. If you lose a series here, you're not automatically out of the tournament or anything nasty like that. And we get Genji banned out as well. One Shimada is already annoying enough. You don't want to go up against both of them. So double Shimada, no thank you. And, well, that keeps us. On the red team side. I mean, Max, pa uh, Max Passion on the side lane, I suppose. Slam Grotta. I still want to see something crazy for him eventually. But what's the tank choice for Skok? I suppose it's going to be revealed now. There's our Tracer. Okay. Tracer. Ooh, ETC. Hello? Okay, side laner. All right. Possibly an ETC side lane. I was about to say, ETC main tank? Uh, in game number two, really? Uh, <laughs> uh, what? Team? Nova? Really? <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Guys, the French, there we go. The French with Leeming, Nova, and White Mane. I don't think that didn't look like it was a misclick. So, apparently they're playing Nova now. This is not Meta Madness. I swear to God we don't have pre-bans. I swear. I'm not lying to you. But, yeah, the Frenchies, maybe a little bit too much wine earlier today. I don't know what exactly went on over there, but I guess we'll see. Final pick, and it is Murden. Murden ETC, Tracer Hanzo. <laughs> we got them going up against the Nova. Towns of Doom, everybody. <laughs> Game number two. Game number two! Well, here we are. On the left, Malganir with a Nubarak. We got Ixia on White Mane, Nagrom on Liming. And it makes a little bit more sense right now why Jean Lasalle is muted. I mean, if he picks Nova in a tournament game, I don't even want to know what he's picking in Storm League. So, yeah, he's rocking player killer number one. And we have a virtual on the Haka. On the right side of the map, it's Gia for the Svenskas with Hanzo, Maka on Rega, Swam Grotta on ETC, Skook on Murden, and Max Passion on Tracer. All right, Nova, Nova, Nova. Let's go. Yeah, this should actually be fun. I told this before, but uh, it's actually, it's been a while. Nova is one of the heroes where every single time when she she gets picked, like in my in my head, I have this like Nova, Nova, Nova thing. There's a pretty simple reason for it. So the Americans amongst you might know Ender's Game. That's actually apparently read in school. It's an uh, I think Austin Scott Card wrote it, if I'm not mistaken. And Ender's Game is an awesome book. I would heavily recommend it. Again, if you're American, maybe you've even read it in school. I'm super jealous, by the way, that you guys are reading books like that in school. Uh, something like that would never enter a German classroom. But either way, so if you haven't read it, make sure to check it out. The one thing that I always found super amazing with this entire series that he has written is that in book number two, Ender's Shadow, he basically tells to a large extent the exact same story from game uh, from book number one, just from a different perspective. And when I read that the first time, before I read the book itself, I thought, this is insanely boring. I was like, what a dumb idea, so stupid. Why would I ever read the same story a second time from a different perspective? That's just so dumb. And then I read it. I was at the time traveling in Australia. I wanted something to read. This is one of the few books that I actually was able to pick up there. And if you haven't done it yet, huh? 
That's a kill against Ixia. If you haven't done it yet, I can heavily recommend that you read not only Ender's Game, but that you also read um, Ender's Shadow. Those two games are absolutely spectacular. So if you haven't done it yet, it's incredible how a change in perspective takes a completely different twist on a lot of things that happened within the book. So if you want to have a bit of a recommendation, this would definitely be one. And in one of the games, there's like this one thing where they are going Nova, Nova, Nova as like calling calling basically a strategy out. So every single time I see the, the pick of the hero, that kind of echoes in my head now. I, by the way, there's a movie too. I heard it was garbage. I never watched it for exactly that reason. But yes, can highly recommend the books. So, triggered by Nova being picked. We have now one kill. White man went down, as we just saw. But we'll see how successful Nova can be here for them. We have currently Speed Metal in for ETC. Guitar Hero as well. He is more of a side laner. <laughs> They're going for the hard guy immediately. <laughs> Trying to take him out here. So, let's see. Couldn't get the kill, but again, forced him to pop Essence, for example. So, that was already nicely done, too. And in the meantime, they're invading the camp attempt at the bottom of the map. It's a full four man. The Haka is now coming in. ETC, of course, won't be able to match that. But Tracer is low. Ah, Max Passion. Four hit points. Not even close. And they kill. <laughs> they kill Nova. <laughs> Nova is making her way out. They can't take the camp, but at least they got a kill. And again, Max Passion. I mean, talking about efficiency. He must have a German parent or something. Look at the hit points that he has. Look at the hit points of Tracer. Tracer literally walked away with four hit points. <laughs> oh, Hanzo still got killed. We have already one altar channeled. And the second one at the top comes now through for the red team too. As down at the bottom of the map, the third altar is being fought over. And up to now at least, the Svenskars, they've gotten both. So the party continues here. On level four for Nova, we get the red rapid projection. And here comes Merlin jumping out. The combo from Liming hasn't done enough to net them another kill. But they will get at least this altar. And it's about time because they need those shots fired. They need to get somebody to the top lane because ETC is having a blast. He has nobody else that is even dealing with him. He's currently utilizing his PhD in PvE and starting to take structures down. Is now probably trying to stop the Harker. Yeah. They were trying to stop him on the rotation towards the top. You saw Muradin and a few others starting to move to the uh, top side. The idea obviously being to try and catch him there. But hasn't really happened. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Next camp is up. It's all about the pumpkins, baby. Half level lead, a little bit more than that. Nova coming in with the anti-armor shells. And we also have now intercession. We've actually seen, I think, one or two Novas in the context of Meta Madness. But the French team, they are definitely not shying away from some of their comfort picks here. It is highly interesting to see that. I mean, she's obviously going to attempt to burst some of the squishies down. Ideally, if there's been a stun previously, maybe a good tongue from the Haka. Anything they can set her up and guarantee the shots would be nice. And following up on Nagrom, also pretty useful. Maka, for example, got nearly finished here. And if you can completely take him down, then they would be... Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. But so far, he's still struggling a bit. He gets his snipes out. I mean, he is sitting at 10,000 damage. It's not too shabby. We have 15,000 for Hanzo. We got 11,000 for Liming right now. So there is definitely a, a decent amount of damage that's being dished out. Double altar now coming up. As the Haka is finally starting to deal with ETC up at the top now that he's not needed in the actual team fight anymore. But Malganir is missing these stuns and that's a bit of a problem. Then again, Tracer's in trouble and went too deep. Tracer's gone, taken apart by Liming and that was a bit telegraphed. The way that he dove in with, what was that? Half HP was hit initially already that telegraphed already that this is not going to be a thing. But we have level 10 coming up, so it's a bit of an awkward situation because on the one hand, the blue team really wants to fight since they have a five versus four. On the other hand, they don't have level 10. Yeah, Muradin. No, he's dead. No, he's not. What? And now Li Ming just died? Are you kidding me? Ixian game number one and now that Skog just juked out every single hit like a god. And then they killed Li Ming and now they take White Mane down too. What is happening in these games? 
What is this? Seriously, Juke City, Maya Murden. <laughs> the Storm Bolt, that was just the icing on top of the cake. Arrow missing in the meantime, as they now have level 10 and everything else that they need. So once again, the, the push through the bottom of the map, 28 to 32 points on the two cores now. But yeah, it is just nasty what's going on over here. Kind of crazy. Mark a triple tap. Tap it, baby. Nope, he's not going to be tapped. So they went full triple tap, not even precision strike. Mirrodin, they leave him alone. Yeah, he went to Maker. <laughs> hey, Maker against triple tap. And Tracer is dead again, too. This is becoming a bit of a thing. Tracer needs to be careful here. So, yep. Nova is trying to get some uh, get some kills in. It is surprisingly close. 4-4 four to four on the kill count. Experience not really that much of a lead anymore for the red team. And at the top, we now have Swam Grotta. Granted, still pressuring. But it's not like he's breaking through the gate and attacks the fort anytime soon. He is continuing, but in the meantime, at the bottom of the map, they're going for another kill. And that's the end of Rega. Li Ming also died, so at least it's a kill for a kill, but while all this is playing out, uh, well, White Man dying, Nova dying, all right, all right, now, now it's a bit too much. I was about to say, while all this plays out, the four, the bell tower is being taken apart, but they're losing way too much here. So they just lost four of their heroes, easy peasy, and that's level 13 for the red team. But yeah, the fight there, three down, and then towards the end, the Haka was trying to escape too. Gets obviously caught and killed, so that's that. They can steal the pumpkins away from the opponent's team now. We have a full level lead right here for the Svenskas, and there's an altar up on the map too. The one thing that they couldn't do just yet is actually take anything down. These guys are griefing. All right, the wall's gone. Four more shots have been fired. 24 to 32 at this point. But they couldn't take a bell tower. Even with all the kills that they got, they weren't able to do any of that. They have established a significant leading experience again, on the other hand. So that's the good news. Looking at the damage output, we now have 21,000 for Nova. She is top damage on the blue team. It's actually ahead of Li Ming now. 29,000 for Hanzo still puts him into uh, the uh, top spot on the leaderboard. Yeah, ETC with stage dive is now coming in. I didn't really talk about the stage dive pick, but I mean, it's the obviously obvious choice, obviously. Because that's kind of why you pick ETC here. You want to have a pseudo global against the Haka. He can still hold the side lane and then jumps in. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that was nice. Nagrom double stun, but White Main ready to react and help out. Once again, using a Playmaker to make a bit of a move here. And they are isolating Ixia whenever they can. Or at least they're trying to isolate somebody else by moving Ixia out of the fight. That's not actually too shabby. But they're not doing a lot of, on structures. Now this is match point. <laughs> Nagrom! No! He ate the storm ball. Look at that ragdoll. Absolutely killed over there. And now they're taking Nubarak down. They're dropping White Man. They're taking Nova apart. The entire team is going to shit. Everything is falling apart here. But yeah. They were waiting, they saw, and then they dropped Li Ming. Bam! Got slapped around hard. No chance. 16 on the board now. That's the two level lead. There are seven kills ahead, the two levels ahead. They're taking the bell tower. That's five shots fired, putting them down to 19. And they obviously want to have a bit more control here if they can somehow manage. Get those pumpkins, steal them away from the opponent once they are spawning again, which isn't 15 seconds. So there's a chance to get a few more shots fired through the bot lane control. Which is still the most important one on Towers of Doom. Again, if you control the lane with most of the mercenary camps, you're a good spot. That arrow is going nowhere, by the way. Oof. Yeah, they still got the Haka, so congratulations. But uh, that arrow went wild. I heard that there is actually a report currently in the US that it might hit Florida any day now. Still underway. 13 to 5 on the kills and well pumpkin's still busy down at the bottom of the map it's a five versus four now 
after they've taken the Hulk out. And with Hanzo just poking damage again, they're getting people low. Ah, Muradin makes the jump, misses the Storm Ball. Kind of unfortunate. That could have been the end of... Oh, wow, good damage against Li Ming and against Ixia. That wasn't the intended target of Tracer, but that was still good. Muradin Storm Ball, again, if he connected, uh, was just about to say they might have been able to take uh, Nova apart. But they are playing an insane amount of pressure right now, of course. They're really just trying to pin them down as best as they can here. Without level 16 talents, it's always tricky for the fan club. The Frenchies, they are just trying their best to uh, get level 16 and then bring this back. But it is difficult. ETC comes in. Nova might be in trouble. Yeah, but they still save it. Ixia is absolutely on point, as he was in game number one. Doing a great job here. Stormbolt this time is hitting the Haka, and they follow up on it. Everybody down here is getting healed too. So they're still trying to keep them at bay, keeping them at a distance. I think that the Pumpkins are going to be taken out, but the bad news is... Oh, that's problematic. Yeah, the save! <laughs> and ETC might actually die now. But they're already splitting out to get some of the altars. Triple altar phase is always bad. Malganir eats the Storm Bolt and still makes it. Wow. But five shots are already fired. And Tracer is dealing with the Haka at the top. They have a three level lead now, which is uh, ridiculous to begin with. Triple tap is coming in. Virtual gets the heals and is still getting killed. Nice. They try for Ixia. Li Ming at the bottom of the map is still trying to protect as much as she can, but Nagrom is also in trouble. They want all the altars now, and if they get the two additional altars, then the blue team would be down to a single point on the core, and boss is of course up as well. So this one is the most imp or the most difficult to channel, and they're getting it. That means six points on the core now, down into the single digits. And before they're going for their own altar, they want to go for the boss. So they're taking it right now. Yeah, Malganir gets hit. Oh, Tracer is gone. I don't think they can take this. No, they need to try and take the altar at least. And I think even that might be a stretch. The Swedes got a little bit greedy. And the Frenchies, they are trying to capitalize on it. Yeah, Nagrom is... Where did Gia? Come on. Gia. Gia. Dude, please. <laughs> Where was that arrow going? Oh, they're throwing. They're throwing. Swam Grotta is on the point. Should have bought them time for the channel earlier. The shots get fired, but at least he's able to get this. They body blocked a little bit more. Five shots fired. That means one point on the core. One, two, 28. But still, it's four heroes that are gone on the red team side now. So this is the chance to try and bring it back. They closed the experience gap at least a bit. It's now only one and a half levels. Not quite. But what can they take over? Yeah, the Swedes were a bit too greedy. They thought they could end it right then and there. And they were very quickly proven wrong. So now an opportunity for the fan club to maybe turn this game around. Two heroes on the map. They have to give a few things up. And they know it too. Now, it only matters in the sense that their access to some of the spawning altars might be cut off. But if they just channel one more altar, it doesn't matter how many bell towers they control. One more altar and it's over. So, yeah, there's that. But with that, we now have half a level until 20, which is, of course, another aspect. We have Muradin and ETC back in the middle. Rega is coming back any second now, too. And they are already pushing this. So the situation has essentially flipped. It's now five to three bell towers in favor of the fan club. But as long as they get their act together regarding team fights, it's totally fine. Ixia is getting attacked, barely makes it out. Tracer then again. In trouble, the arrow comes in too late, and that is Tracer gone. Yeah, 55 seconds until she's in, 20 seconds until the altars are there. So it's 30 seconds that you have to bridge before your, oppo where your opponent might be able to get both of them. Too greedy. You can play this a little bit safer at this point. I mean, they will have level 20. Swam Grotta, they want him. They are just waiting for him to move down straight and then uh, they can uh, jump on him. They saw everything that's happening here. Poke this out. Bullseye is in. Muradin, Ancestral is out. Nice hit from ETC. There is Gia. Tracer still gone. It's a 5 versus 4 and I don't understand why they're fighting it the way that they do. They can always poke from a distance with Hanzo and others, but now they're just staggering deaths. This is just silly. 
This is not smart. Dude, you are you had 29 points on the core. You can sacrifice some. First of all, Tracer dying was silly to begin with. But now they are down to 18 points. The Frenchies are starting to claim complete control here. There's another kill. That's three down. The Swedes, they're just throwing this away. They're literally throwing this away right now. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Guys, you can count to five, right? Like, why would they think that they win the fight in the choke point? Why would they think that they have to? Yeah, now they are trying to get a cheeky kill. Which is nice, but just don't overdo it. Just move back when you see you don't get it. Because again, there is no benefit of you do losing another hero. Slowing them down is great so that you don't face off against the barrage. But you have to be worried about way more than that. It's 1 point to 18, still plenty of opportunities to win it. But played a little bit smarter. You fought hard to get into this position, so use it. Tracer is back in. Yeah, now we got pumpkins at the bottom of the map. Top side. Tracer can needle things. And look at the damage numbers. Things have changed at least a bit. Li Ming is back in the pole position for the blue team with 61,000 damage. Nova is behind with 56k. And there's Hanzo with 69. So Tracer again. I mean, at this point, Tracer's just trolling. Then again. Seriously, at this point, it's becoming laughable. Stop. Just stop. Just literally sit with the rest of the team. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is... How many times in a row now that she was just, like, killed without reason? Three? It's like the third time that they just get killed like this. Three times in a row. So, yeah. That's another altar that they have to give up. If I'm the red team, I'm starting to get a little pissed here. So they're trying for the Haka. This should be a kill at least. So, finally. They're getting a kill. They lost another altar. Now it's 10 points to 1. Again, they started at 29. But no matter how well the French are doing here, they're playing a great comeback game. But they're still with only a single point on their core. That hasn't changed. And ETC also has a global. So Tracer will be back. And at this point, you should put a leash on her. Just seriously, like, just put a leash on her. ETC can hold it. Murden can hold it. Somebody has to. Because she's been doing a lot of dying lately. Put a leash on her. Keep her there. And then just tell her, like, look, you stay with us. And then we take the team fight. Thank you. Why they are fighting. Now the Frenchies are doing it. Four versus five. The arrow is missing again. But why are you playing the four versus five? The hacker isn't there yet. If Hansa didn't miss that arrow, you would be in trouble. And you might still be. Nagrom is low, tries to get out. Tracer is going for the kill. This time she gets it. So the hacker comes back. Li Ming and White Mane are gone. I mean, it is a game of throws today. First, it was the red team that decided that they don't really want to win this one. And then the Frenchies were like, you know what? We really like those plays where you fight with a number disadvantage for no reason whatsoever. We think we can do that too. And they did. I mean, heat of the battle, adrenaline and everything. But still, <laughs> this, this was a weird one. This was really a weird one. The decision making at some points, wild. So now it's a three versus five. Nova is gone. So is Anubarak. And that's a 2-0 victory. The Svenskas, they just wanted to make it interesting, guys. They just wanted to make it interesting. That's all that happened here. So shots are being fired. This is game. And this is the red team moving on to the next round of the winner bracket. GG <laughs> and well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.